Hey, what's up? This is Brandon Simmons for BrandonSimmons.biz. This is my weekly video blog called Bullheaded, a review of the Houston Texans news, as well as a preview of the upcoming game matchups. So, this week, the Texans will be at home uh, hosting the New York Jets and coming off a huge win um, over the Tennessee Titans from last weekend. So, you know, we'll get into what they have to do uh, to beat the Jets this week, uh, this weekend. Um, but first, let's talk about the uh, Titans game. So, finally got a game recap that I'm actually uh proud of uh for the first time in a long long time um texans beat the titans on the road uh 22 to 13 and first off i just want to give kudos to the defense it was a tremendous effort um by the defense uh just to really uh get things going and just really uh solidify this game um you know two sacks uh forcing ryan Tannehill to throw four interceptions um, just a great, uh, just a great game uh, by this defensive unit. Um, you know, just overall. Uh, one particular highlight I was, you know, I really liked um, was the Gouge Hill uh, interception towards the end of the first quarter. Um, you know, just when the Titans were kind of, you know, knocking down on the, knocking, knocking on the door to try to get some points in. Um, you know, Hill gets the pick, runs it all the way back to the other side of the field. Uh, kind of reminded me of. Um, well, when Whitney Merciless, ugh, Whitney Merciless um, did, uh, you know, a couple years ago, um, you know, Tennessee's, you know, driving at the goal line. All of a sudden, Tannehill throws a pick and he takes it to the other side of the field. So, um, you know, great, uh, great play by Grugier Hill on that. Um, overall, just great effort by the defense. Also, two of those picks uh, coming from um, cornerback Desmond King. Now. As for the offense, I will say this. They look better um, starting out the game. Um, they look more – Tyrod Taylor, he looked like, you know, he was getting a little bit more rhythm uh, back in his game. Um, you know, the, it, the offense looked balanced um, in that first quarter, um, and they were able to move the ball down the field. Now, the problem is they just could not keep that going throughout the game. And so – I mean, yeah, if you if you can do that, you know, starting out, getting everybody excited, that's fine. But, you know, you got to get those things going throughout the game. I think, um, I don't know, I can't remember if it was the third quarter, fourth quarter, might have been the fourth quarter. But in the second half, um, when the defense was really like just putting it on the Titans, just making big play after big play, um, you know, the Texans will follow it up uh, with a three and out. And it's like, you know, that's kind of, you know, those defensive plays that they're making, those are like, momentum changers, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, that gets the team hyped up going forward, you know, ready to close this thing out, and all of a sudden, here you go, three and out, it's just kind of, it's a little bit of a deflating feeling uh, when those three and outs come around, so um, offense just has to do a better job of just keeping that same, like, energy, like, throughout the game, that's really what it comes down to, but overall, it was a good effort by the team on both sides of the ball, um, you know, good to go out there on the road and, you know, just get a win. And, you know, for one thing, too, yeah, you know, the Titans, they were, obviously, they were missing Derrick Henry. But, you know, they still, I mean, the, the Titans were still fighting, <laughs> you know. Um, they were still, like, you know, trying to take us a little bit serious. And, you know, there were some things that, you know, just kind of fell apart on their end. Um, so, they just came up shorter than, you know, what they wanted to. So, but. Definitely great job uh, by the Texans uh, just getting that win on the road. Uh, not that much roster news um, except this one little thing about Philip Lindsay uh, getting cut. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, yeah, earlier this week, the Texans, uh, they cut Philip Lindsay after, you know, he, signing him in the offseason. So, um, it's this is like the second running back um, out of these new uh, running backs that, we, that we've cut. So, First, it was Mark Ingram. Well, we didn't really cut him uh, more so. You know, we actually traded him, um, you know, to New Orleans Saints and everything. Um, but also, but with Lindsey, you know, we just straight up, you know, cut him. And I think he's already picked up on waivers and everything. And, you know, just reading around about uh, this cut, um, you know, it said that, you know, this year he had like 50 carries for about 130 yards. So that's, that's just about like a little bit less than – you know, three yards to carry um, compared to his, um, to when they were saying it. Like, you know, he had like, he was averaging like 4.8 uh, coming into the season or something like that. So, 
Um, it's just a uh, it's just a sad uh, turn of events of how you know, especially those two pieces um, were kind of heralded a little bit. Um, you know, I, I mean, I could, like coming in, it was like you know, Mark Ingram, Philip Lindsay, and you know, uh, David Johnson. You know, this could be something uh, to like kind of jolt the running game a little bit, um, particularly with you know Phillips and Ingram. Because, you know, they're the newer pieces. Um, Johnson was like, you know, a former piece and everything. So um, with Johnson, we kind of, I think a lot of fans are kind of wasn't expecting too much of him, given the fact that uh, with his situation, they kind of figured like, you know, things, the things he did, you know, before, uh, you know, all his accolades are kind of like been put behind him a little bit coming into last season. Um, I think for me personally, I felt like, you know, Lindsey was going to be, I thought he was going to be, you know, get really get a resurgence of, you know, coming to the Texans and cause you know, he, he didn't have a spectacular season uh, last year, but I definitely thought, um, you know, coming here, he's going to get a fresh start. He's going to, you know, kind of just carry things over, but uh, you know, things happen. Um, our line probably wasn't, our line wasn't that bad where, where uh, he couldn't get something done, but you know, it was probably just, Maybe he is, you know, on the decline, or maybe he is kind of disappointed about how things are going. Um, with Ingram, um, I, you know, I felt like, you know, he was, he's been around for a while, so he might not have the same explosiveness as he's had, um, you know, coming into this year. But um, it is what it is. But I mean, just back to Lindsey, um, I really expected him to be. I expected him to be used a little. I thought he was going to be used a lot more uh, than what he has been and, you know, probably just be more effective. But, you know, obviously it didn't work out. And so, you know, that's now he's well on his way to go restart somewhere else. Um, one name I am hearing about is, you know, Scotty Phillips, um, you know, being the emergence <laughs> on this in this uh, new running back room, just waiting to see like what he's going to actually do. And so I guess, you know, it's one thing to just keep an eye out for that and see how good he'll actually uh, become, uh, excuse me, going into the rest of this year. Um, so yeah, right now it's like him, I think uh, Burkhead, Johnson, uh, pretty much our three um, primary backs, right? Uh, running backs right now. And so, with Phillips, um, you know, he could, if he proves to, uh, if he really shows something, um, the rest of this year, um, I'm hoping it'll translate into something parallel or similar to, um, what Arian Foster did. I remember when Arian Foster first kind of broke out, um, he had like a big game, you know, late into the year, I think it was like late into the 09 season. And then, you know, he followed it up obviously with like a couple of more great years and everything really became like an offensive threat. So really hoping on that, you know, he can, Phillips can deliver some of that uh, particular magic um, at the moment, but you know, we'll see how it goes. So uh, not going to be long with this um, game preview. Uh, so Texans are coming in, uh, coming home, hosting the New York Jets and with the Jets, uh, they got rookie quarterback uh, Zach Wilson, who's actually coming off an injury and everything. So um, it'll it'll be an inter it'll be an interesting uh, it'll be an interesting dynamic in battle. Uh, and for the simple fact that um, you know we talk people talk about you know the Texans offense this and that, and you know Jets offense really isn't that much better. Um, they got Michael Carter um, over there, and I think. After that, there's not too much to really just brag on about with this offense. So, um, and the numbers don't <laughs> the numbers don't look that great in their favor either. So, um, but when it comes to our, our offense, our numbers ain't that high on the <laughs> ain't that high. Obviously, to uh, just brag on. So, um, with that being said, it's it's just really three things um, the Texans can do uh, to win this game. And so, first off, uh, offense they have to sustain a good rhythm throughout the game. So as I mentioned um, with the Tennessee game, um, you know, Tyrod Taylor, he came out there. He was good on that first drive, pretty rhythmic and all that other stuff. Um, but after that, you know, just throughout the game, real sparingly, uh, particularly in the second half is where things kind of got stagnant for him. Um, they just, Texans just have to, you know, just play both halves um, of this game. 
uh, despite how the Jets might appear on paper. You know, they're kind of down there in the basement with us um, as far as, like, you know, bad teams go. And so I would say um, if the Texans, if the offense can just sustain a good rhythmic, rhythmic drives um, in both halves, uh, they should be good to go. Um, second thing the Texans got to do is attack the red zone. So just like the Titans were uh, with their red zone attempts, um, the Jets, they're pretty bad uh, with giving up red zone attempts. In fact, they're they're dead last as far as like giving up those attempts. So um, a lot of t- <laughs> with, the t- with the Jets is – I, I refer to the Titans as bend, uh, but don't break type of defense with that. But with the Jets, it's more like a they'll break. So <laughs> um, what the Texans need to do is just go in there and just um, take advantage of that, uh, just like they were supposed to take advantage of that um, against Tennessee. Um, go in here against New York, take advantage of them giving up all these um, reds on attempts, and you know just make more. Make the most out of it. Put some points on the board, and not just points, but you know, actually, um, you know, score some touchdowns, um, in the uh, in the red zone. Uh, get something like you know, just get something for the offense to like be excited about. Not just and not just the offense, but get something that you know the fans can be excited about. Uh, when you hit that area. Uh, third thing the Texans have to do is get after the rookie quarterback. So, like I said, Zach Wilson. He should be uh, making his return this week. And so, you know, rookie quarterbacks, you know, they've been – they'll come in, uh, you know, they'll get, they'll, get their, they'll get their feet wet a little bit, you know what I'm saying, and just try to figure out and adjust to the speed of the game and all these other things. So before injury, uh, he was probably well on his way to doing that. Um, but now that he's, like, you know what I'm saying, coming back from injury, um, you know, he's probably trying to get back into a rhythm – a little bit more after missing a few games. So I would definitely say um, just get after him, make him uncomfortable, uh, you know, make him think about some things, you know, switch the coverages up, you know, do what <laughs> do what any defensive coordinator um, basically would do um, when they know they got they have a rookie quarterback up, a quarterback coming out there. Like just go out, flex your, uh, <laughs> flex your playbook a little bit, you know what I'm saying, show them what, like give him his welcome to the NFL moment, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, definitely just you know shake him up a little bit, uh, throw his rhythm off, um, and all the other stuff, and you know you should and you know it'll probably it'll definitely um give our defense their second straight impressive uh performance. Um, so those are the th- three things that Texans have to do to get a win this weekend. Uh, sustain a good rhythm throughout the whole game. Uh, excuse me, make sure the offense sustains a good rhythm throughout the whole game. Um, attack the red zone, put points on the board as much as possible in the red, went in the red zone. And also just get after the uh, rookie quarterback. Uh, make him have an uncomfortable return uh, to the game. Texans do all three of those things. They should be able to get a win this weekend. Their second straight win, if that. So, with that being said, I'm Brandon Simmons for BrandonSimmons.biz. All the black.